surround us We will fear no evil We'll trust in the Lord with our hearts And in your joy we will dwell forever Though the night may Joy is coming, coming
Joy is coming, c l e r All praise to g i n g Jesus. I know joy is coming. Yes, joy is coming. Hallelujah, Jesus. Your neighbor and welcome them to church. Hallelujah!
So much. 
your name, Jesus. You're able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You're everything, you're my everything, Jesus. You're my everything. What the Lord can do. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. We are.
Jesus is good. Jesus, you are good in this place. You are holy. You are worthy. King of kings and the Lord of lords, we are in love with you this morning. There is nothing that gives us joy and inner satisfaction than to come before you honor you. Thank you for choosing us. Now we belong to you and we are the children and the people of God. Family, I'm going to say something quite interesting. We serve a God who's not a taker. We serve a God who's actually a giver. Do you know that when you and I come into this room every Sunday, in fact, wherever you are during the course of the week, when you present yourself as a living sacrifice and sing to a living God every morning and afternoon and you glory in Him and you give Him the honor and the praise, let me tell you how He responds to you and me when we do that in the book of Psalms 92 if you read from verse 12 to verse 14 he tells us that those who are planted in the house of the Lord and who come and praise the Lord they will flourish they will remain evergreen and he will restore their youth when you and I present ourselves before a living God he gives us back strength upon strength grace upon grace we could never outgive God our fruit of our lips he gives us back more mercy every day in fact the Bible says that God's mercies are new say it with me every God's mercies are new every morning. In fact, they are new every morning, even before you and I begin to come before Him and honor Him. That's how good your God is. Let's honor the Lord this morning, family. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you to get ready to partake of the Holy Communion this morning. get your emblems it is so good to be in the presence of the Lord this morning 
Holy Spirit, we thank you for inviting us to come and tabernacle with you. Even as we honor the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We are about to remind ourselves of the goodness of the Lord. We are about to remember a covenant moment that the Lord instituted 2,000 years ago. Family, when you and I come here and gather to partake of the Holy Communion, I want us to do that with a heart of gratitude. I want us to assume a posture of thankfulness, remembering what Jesus did 2,000 years ago. His body was bruised for our wholeness and healing and his blood was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. You know what actually fascinates me when I think about this? And I'm sure you'll agree with me. What kind of God will do this for people who are even his enemies? We were far from him. We were sinners. It's actually easy to do something for someone good. We were still dead in our sin, enemies of God. And yet, he did this thing for us. That's how much love he has for us. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23. That's where I read my passage and it says, For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread, gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. As we partake of this bread, let us think of the body of Christ because you see, it represents our healing and our wholeness in our minds, in our bodies. In fact, the Bible says that by His stripes we are healed. Those stripes fell on His body. This morning, we are co-signing with the Lord to say yes and amen and thank you for your blood. Thank you for your body, Lord Jesus. Let's partake of the bread, family. Verse 25 reads, In the same way he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. The blood of Jesus symbolizes forgiveness of sins to the people of God. It actually speaks of a covenant, a new covenant that we have entered into with the Lord. It ensures us that God is open for a ministry of reconciliation. His mission is to pull us to Him as opposed to away from Him. That's the power of the blood. Let's partake of the cup, family. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus, who died upon the cross. Lord, we do not want to presume that we can come into your table trusting in our own righteousness and in our goodness, but we want to tap into your mercies, O Lord, by your will, O God, through the work of the Holy Spirit. For the death of your son brought life to the world. Jesus, by your holy body and holy blood, you gave us freedom from sin and from every evil. Keep us faithful to you, Lord. Keep us planted in you, Lord. Keep us in your kingdom, O oh God. We pray this in your name, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory. Hallelujah. That's a victory drink right there. That's give the Lord an honor this morning as we celebrate a new covenant. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Family, before you take a seat, I want you to find three people. I'll tell you why three as opposed to five. Because you are going to say to each and every single one of those three people, God is so, 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 so good. I counted seven souls 
Give me seven souls, family. Let's go. Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm hearing five souls in this house. Give me my seven souls, people of God. God is so, 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 so good. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. If you were not in the room last week, if you were not the church last week, I'm going to invite you. We post our sermons a week later. So go and find City Life Church on Facebook. Connect with what Pastor Ginny was sharing last week. Powerful, moving. You'll be refreshed. You'll be touched. You'll be ministered to. I want to encourage you to do that. Amen. Glory. And those that were, it will be a great time to reconnect with that message again. It was absolutely glorious. God is moving in this place and we love it and we thank the Lord for another season and another day of another absolutely glorious message that is going to be unleashed on us. Can't wait. If you are visiting City Life Church for the very first time, we love visitors. So I do not intend to embarrass you or make you feel awkward or uncomfortable in any way, form or shape. However, I am going to request you to do something for us. I'm going to ask you if you're visiting with us to raise your hand. We just want to acknowledge you, greet you, and say we love you. Oh, I see your hand there, my sister. I see some hands up in there. I see some hands at the back over there. Guys, don't miss some hands over there. I see some hands this side as well. Welcome to City Life Church. This is home. We appreciate you. Thank you very much for coming through. We're actually handing out those cards and a pen. Fill them in for us, please. And soon after, you can either hand them over when the host come around with an offering basket or alternatively you can hand, hand them over at the welcome center soon after this encounter we appreciate you we want you to be part of the family and so feel free i trust that you've already started having a great time with us you are about to be blessed some more because this we've just begun hallelujah it's offering time family i didn't hear you I said it's offering time glory I, I want to quickly share something with you there is a concept that I find very interesting and I hope it's going to be interesting for you what I find amazing with it is that irrespective of who you are where you are in your life do you see how diverse we are but all of us have this one thing in common we all share a moment we call what God has done all of us and we are in between what God is what God is about to do we are in between what God has done to what God is about to do so whoever you are wherever you've been what you're going through believe you me those two moments are constantly before you that means when I look back when you look back you always look back with the heart of gratitude and thankfulness isn't it because you remember the goodness of the Lord, right? But when you look forward to what God is about to do, you do so in faith, in trust, trusting that I serve a living God who is about to give me another breakthrough in my life. Amen? I have a question though. What do we do with the now moment? Actually, now we know about yesterday's moment and tomorrow's moment your responsibility and how i respond to that living god calls on me and on you to walk in obedience before god walk in faith before god in fact in the new testament if you start reading from jo from matthew mark luke john jesus repeatedly talks about have faith in god have faith in god ye of little faith he is calling on us to walk in faith that's the response you and I are called to have in God. So as we do that, we begin to allow God, be God, and we don't limit Him. When it comes to our finances, there's two moments. There is a seed time and there's a harvest time. The seed time of my finances speaks of the work I do to the kingdom of God and towards God. Seed. I am a sower. I seed. 
And in fact, what is even amazing with the seed time is not even restricted to money. Do you know that your time that you give to your labor, it's your seed towards your labor because you know that when I put in the seed down there, month end, there is that thing called harvest time. It's called commission. It's called income. You know that. You do that in the biblical in the spiritual sense it's the same principle when you come before the living god you bring your tithes and your offering and you honor the seed time you can trust a living god to honor his harvest time because when he comes he is going to open the windows of heaven because that's what he promised because he is faithful and when you do that not only does he open the windows the bible says he even rebukes the devourer for your sake that's how faithful God is every single time you are between what God is about to do to what God has done you are called I am called to walk in obedience to God and to have faith in God let me read you the book of Genesis chapter 8 verse 22 in closing and it says while earth remains seed time and harvest time cold and heat winter and summer day and night shall never cease some of us have been experiencing some heat waves in fact we just came out of a night time it's daytime family seed time and harvest time are not going anywhere new covenant or new or no new covenant we ought to honor the lord in this financial space and when we do god is able to respond in kind amen May I request you to stand in the presence of the Lord, family of God. God is good up in here. Giving in this church is absolutely gloriously easy. We've got card facilities at the Welcome Center. If you want to swipe a card, you'll be able to do that soon after this encounter. Alternatively, I'm going to invite you. We've got our banking details on screen. So you can tap into your smartphone and access your banking app. You'll be able to give that way as well. I see that our hosts are in front with offering baskets. You'll be able to also give that way. Alternatively, of course, you can snap scan your tithes and offerings in before the Lord. And as you do that, I trust that the Lord will be able to do what He promised He will do. Family of God, let us get ready to sing to the Lord as we give to the Lord. Shaken, we will not be moved. For the Lord is beside us. With Him we cannot lose. Though the shadow surrounds us, we will fear no evil. We'll trust in the Lord with our hearts and in Your joy. We will dwell forever. Joy is coming, coming, in the morning. Oh, praise to oh, King Jesus. Jesus. I know joy is coming. I know joy is coming. Yes, joy is coming. Joy is coming. 
morning In the morning You're like your love We won't submit, no Father, thank you for grace and mercy in the house. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the spirit of obedience and grace, Lord, to walk in obedience to you. Father, we love you. We glorify you. Thank you for the, the faithfulness of your people in giving. And I thank you, Lord, that you respond as it is written in your word. You are God of your word. You honor your word. And we appreciate you, Lord, always and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before you sit down, tell the person that you didn't speak to the last time that you ignored. Now it's your opportunity to go to them. Tell them that get ready, get ready, get ready for a great encounter. We have, we're about to go into a great encounter. Amen. Jesus is good. Lord, we love you. Quick announcements. If you are a parent to kids between a year old up to 12 years old, we've got city kids. Feel free to register the kids. Let them be part and parcel of something amazing. Pastor, um, we've got pastors that are doing an incredible work and I know that the kids will have a wonderful time. Otherwise, if you are a parent who is um, uh, like a babies and all of them, we have a parents lounge. It's on my right towards the end of them. You can be able to go and use the facility if your child feels uncomfortable. It's, it's a room that is well decked out, aircon and toys. The kids will have a great time and you will be able to follow the encounter because we've got some live streaming going on with our two monitors in there. And then we offer a self-service complimentary tea and coffee in our coffee shop. So I invite you soon after this encounter, don't rush off, grab a cup, mingle, meet one or two people before you take off 
and as you do that and oh and of course we sell some nice eats we've got toasted cheese and tomatoes chicken mayo sandwiches burovos rolls samosas they are all well priced you're gonna enjoy them they're very tasty i've tasted them trust me i'm a foodie hello so i know that the stuff is very good and then family if you've got any other inquiries we've got a welcome center for that you'll be able to ask our ladies they'll be able to assist you and guide you and for the rest of the church news here are your city life anchors hey church and welcome it's so great to have you with us this year we want to go deeper in devotion and in our intimacy with Jesus. So why not join us for another powerful hour of prayer, worship and encounter this Tuesday, the 12th of March from 6 to 7 p.m. at our Lone Hill location and make it part of your rhythm for the year. That's right. Hey church and welcome. It's so good to have you with us. If the outdoors, adventures and great company are your cup of tea, then why not join us for our first hike of the year on Saturday, the 23rd of March at Cradle Moon. It's going to be at 7 a.m. The cost is only 70 Rand and you can do a five or a seven kilometer hike. It's going to be absolutely stunning. That's right. Church, we have baby dedications coming up. They will be taking place at our Clearwater location on Sunday, the 17th of March and our Lone Hill location on Sunday the 24th of March. If you would like to dedicate your baby to the Lord, then you can leave your details at the welcome desk after today's encounter or send an email to info at citylifechurch.co.za. Well, that's all our church news for today. Have a great encounter. An awesome Sunday. And we'll see you again next time. Cheers. Fantastic. Welcome this morning to our 8.30 encounter. I'm excited. Anybody excited? Come on. Where are my worshippers at? Have we got any worshippers in the house? Come on. Anybody in love with Jesus? Come on. Anybody in this house who can say, God has been better than good to me? Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. And I understand that God is omnipresent. In other words, God is present anywhere, everywhere. But I have come this morning to encounter the manifest presence of God. I've come this morning with a heart that says, God, I want you and no one else. I get that God is in the house, but I want my God in my house in Jesus' name. Come on. If you believe that, would you stand with us this morning? There's some prophetic things that I believe are for this house this morning, but there's something that happens when we worship Him. The Bible says that God inhabits the praises of His people. When you and I worship in spirit and in truth, it's like a magnet to the manifest presence of God. And so right now, we're gonna bring Him some praise in this house. Come on, we worship You, Jesus. We bless You, Lord. We are here. today by the Spirit of God that there are people here that you've come this morning and actually you've come because the reality is your life has been like a roller coaster there are people here today that it's felt like you've just been holding on it feels like you've been through an incredible shaking season and there are people in this church this morning that you've put God on notice you've said God I'm coming to church today if I don't hear from you if I don't 
experience You. God, then I'm not coming back. I wanna declare over you, this will not be your last Sunday in the house of God. God's about to move in your situation. God's about to bring a miracle in your life in the Name of Jesus. I wanna speak to some men in this house. Where are my men at? Come on. All the men of God, give us a wave, come on. I wanna tell you that you are here for a reason. And I felt this week coming into this Sunday, this year of open doors, some of us, especially as men, we've underestimated the Word that God has for us. For some of us men, God would say to you, you've been riding the back seat for so long. It's time to come up front. It's time to step up in your role as a man of God. I wanna tell you, if you are a man of God in this house, God has equipped you, He's weaponized you. You are a weapon in the hands of the Lord, come on. You've underestimated the power of God, come on. I wanna tell you so often in life, especially us as men, we overestimate what we can do with what we don't have. And we over underestimate what we can do with what we do have. Let me say that again. As men, we overestimate what we can do with what we don't have. If I just won the lottery, if I just had that job, if I just had that sale, if I just had that contract, if I just had that relationship, if I just had that income stream, you've overestimated and you've underestimated that which God has already placed in you as a man of God today. I wanna to declare over the men, you are a weapon. You are coming through. This is a year of open doors. You are gonna walk. It's time to get out the back seat and take your rightful place as the head in your home in Jesus' Name. Do not abdicate that responsibility. God said, this is a year of open doors. This is a year of wide open spaces. The Lord asked me today that we need to lift some people up in this house who are trusting in the area of their residence, their home, the place where they live. God says this is a year of open spaces. It's time to expand. It's time to move. Some of you have been trusting God for a bigger home. You've been trusting God for a bond approval. You've been trusting God for a move to a different neighborhood. If that's you today, you've been trusting God for tenants. I want you to lift your hands right now. I believe God says this is a year of open doors. This is a year of open spaces. Father, over every person that has lifted their hand as a sign of surrender to a God who can bring about a miracle, God. This is a miracle Sunday, come on. I'm not limiting God just to another talk. No, God can do a miracle in this house in the name of Jesus. Over every hand represented, over every family, Lord that represent children, that represents siblings and grandparents. Father, right now I ask, Father, for divine favour, Lord. I thank You, Lord, that people are moving areas, moving suburbs, that, Father, people are getting that which, the, 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 what has been a delay on approvals for bonds, for things that relate to them being able to purchase a house, where those that have been blacklisted, that they will be unlisted from a blacklisted list in Jesus' Name, that there will be no boundaries, there will be nothing stopping a year of wide open spaces in terms of their residence in the Name of Jesus, Father. You can put your hands down. Father, this morning, as we come to You, as we wanna get and delve into Your Word, Lord, my words have the ability to do very little, but one word from You, God, can change everything, God. Father, over every need in this house, every prayer card represented on these prayer walls, I thank You, God, that You are moving in this church. That God, You are manifest, Lord. That where Your presence is, Your power is. And where Your power is, Your provision is. And so Father, we release today, Lord, a yes and amen. Wherever two or three agree on anything, it shall be done in the Name of Jesus, Father. Come and have Your way today in this encounter. We ask in the Name above every other name, the Name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, Amen. You can give someone a high five. I think you're all high fived out.
after that great encouragement from Kingdom. God's been so, 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 so good to me. Come on, fantastic. I want to remind you even this morning that this is a year of open doors. It was not just a Sunday. It was not just a vision Sunday, but it's the vision of our church for this year. <clears throat> that means for you and I, it is an open deal year. We spoke about three doors and each week, I just wanna kinda reiterate from time to time as to where the messages are fitting in because they're all coming through. Pastor Ginny brought a message last week and I believe it was really about proximity, the door of proximity. We spoke of three doors, the door of inheritance, the door of proximity, and the door of significance. My message today is gonna delve more into what it means to walk walk through a door of significance. When it comes to significance, we need to realize that you and I, the neighbor next to you, we all got doors. We have doors that are our eyes. We have doors that are our mouth. We have doors that are our ears. We have doors that are our heart. And the doors you open determine the doors that open to you. When it comes to this idea of the door of significance, we said that so often as people, we overestimate a door of success and undervalue a door of significance when actually a door of significance opens the door to success. Sometimes the doors we look at are not grandeur. They're not sitting there golden. It's not glowing. They're the obscure doors. They're doors that look small, doors that look insignificant. But the weight of God's glory is measured on a decision that says, God, I want my life to count for something. I want my life to be somebody. Come on, if you get a witness, can I have an amen this morning? And so this morning, I wanna bring a word today entitled the shaking, the shaking. My alternative message is shake, rattle, and roll. Another title could be shaken to be stirred. Come on, we're talking about shaken today. And I would love it if you would turn in your Bible to the book of Hebrews chapter 12. We're gonna pick it up in a few moments. Anyone got a paper Bible in the house? Can you wave your hand in the air? I want you to look around. If you are seated next to someone that's got a paper Bible, there is a different anointing in your area in this auditorium. They are the people that are gonna be raptured first when Jesus comes. Come on, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But it's good to get to the paper Word of God. There's something significant. The Bible verse is also gonna be up on the screen. I'm taking the Word however I can get it today. Come on. Verse 22, but you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. Verse 23, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. If you're a believer today, your name is on the contract in heaven, come on. Some of you all sitting, my name's never on the list. I'm never on the right list. Your name is on the eternal list. That's a reason to celebrate, come on. <clears throat> the judge of all to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, verse 24. To Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant. Thank you, Lord, for the new covenant. And to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, how much less will we if we turn away from him who warns us from heaven? What is God warning us about? And that his time, his voice shook the earth. Say shook. There was a shaking, there is a shaking, and there is a coming shaking. But now he has promised through all the shaking, once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. The word once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken. I want you to see that. That is created things so that we who cannot be shaken may remain. Come on, turn to someone around you, tell, tell them, you are unshakable. <clears throat> That last verse in the message paraphrase, it says this, the phrase one last shaking means a thorough house cleaning, getting rid of all historical and religious junk so that the unshakable essentials stand clear and uncluttered. I love that. Um, <clears throat> Emmanuel, can I get some more monitor? I'm, I'm gonna lose my voice and it's only the first encounter. Come on, I gotta hear myself up here. <clears throat> 
In other words, God's saying that there is some shaking that happens to get rid of some religious stuff. We said before, life is a series, let me teach for a moment, of learning, unlearning, and relearning. Even as a believer, sometimes we've been in church environments that have taught doctrines that are outside of what the scriptures say. It's learning, unlearning to relearn what God would want us to learn. Come on. And so today I want to speak to you on this idea of shaking. I want you to realize that there is no stability. How many of you would agree in the things of the earth? If you just look back. On this planet, over the past five years, we came through a pandemic that in generations to come, they will still reference what you came through. You came through it. Come on. I want to declare over you through, you have come through it. Come on. Economic shaking, political shaking, climate shaking. Pastor Bianca and I had the privilege of taking a week off. We had a great time. Thanks for asking. We are blessed. And we went down to Cape Town. And the one day we went into the city and I was watching my thermometer, which always errs on the downward scope. If you have a French car and it's 20 degrees, it will tell you it's 35 degrees, just putting it out there. They are not geared for hot temperatures. Our one always errs on caution. And we're driving in Cape Town and I'm watching it and I'm getting my camera out because this is exciting. 38, 39. I'm like, oh, get a camera, get a picture. It's 39, 40. 41, 40, are you giving it away? It went up to 44 degrees. The highest temperature recorded in the city of Cape Town is 45.8. We were a degree and a half away from the highest temperature. Things are changing, things are shifting. If you were to summarize the last five years on planet Earth, you would describe them as unstable, uncertain, and unpredictable. We need to realize that, come on. See, the writer of Hebrews is writing to a Jewish audience, telling them, because they were going through a season of shaking, political upheaval, economic attack on the church of Jesus Christ. And here they are writing and a word of encouragement. I've got a word for you today that is an encouragement. Hallelujah. We need to be encouraged in a world that is perpetually shaking. The Bible says that you are and I are part of a kingdom that is unshakable. Come on, what's happening with my voice today? Let me get some water. Thank you. We are part of a kingdom that is unshakable, an unshakable kingdom. Can I have an amen while I drink water? In other words, that which is not based on the kingdom will always be shaken. In other words, when I build my life, when I build my business, if I'm not building it on the kingdom, it will be shaken. My marriage can be shaken. My kids can be shaken. The reality is that we live in a world that if we are not following what God said, if we're not founding it on the kingdom, there will be a shaking that can dismantle anything. The only thing that remains that stands the test of time is that which is built on the kingdom. Come on. See, everything that says God on it does not mean that God is in it. I'm gonna say that again. Everything in this world that has God on it does not mean that God is in it. We live in a culture where we live in a pseudo-Christianity where actually people that are celebrities and whatever, they just throw the G word, God is good, or I just wanna give this award to the universe or to God or whatever. How many of you have seen And I've mentioned this before, even when people in our church have been on dating apps. Are you a Christian? Yes, I'm a Christian. What church do you go to? Oh, that's awkward. I'm kind of between churches right now. Because the reality is everything that has God on it doesn't mean that God is in it. Hello. See, some of us need a revelation that actually you need a guy with a spirit of God in him. You need a woman that's actually a Bible-based believer in Jesus' name. Come on. See, just because it says Jesus, Matthew 7, what's interesting in Scripture is what happens there. It says, not everyone, Jesus speaking in Matthew 7, 20, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. That freaks me out. That means there is a world who's using the name of Jesus 
that actually will not inherit the kingdom. You and I need to be as wise as serpents. Why? Because the reality is we live in a world that people will propagate a form of religion, a form of Christianity without the power. In this church, we're raising up people who believe in the power of God, who believe God is who He says He is, who believe that the Word of God is eternal. Come on, forever in Jesus' name. And God says that which is outside of the kingdom, it's going to be shaken. Anyone ever remember an earth tremor in Joburg? Some of us all, the, the, the Joburg, because of mines, there was an earth tremor. Some of you all thought you're gonna die, hello. <laughs> there was hardly any shaking. I wanna tell you, I was in an earth tremor in California. I was there in a hotel and one night I'd gone to bed and I wanna tell you, that hotel was, I woke up, it was rocking. There was no musicians there, but it was rocking, I wanna tell you, come on. And I grabbed a jersey, grabbed my phone, ran out the door. I don't know what I left, what I didn't leave. And we're standing outside side in the street. There's me, the South African, a whole bunch of people from Europe, people from Brazil. One thing I noticed, ain't nobody from California standing outside with us. I'm like, we're gonna die, you know? You walk back into the hotel foyer, all the Americans that live in the area, just traveling locally, they're all still drinking their cup of tea, doing what they're doing. Kind of, I go up to the guide reception, I'm like, man, how was that? He goes, no, it wasn't an earthquake, it was just an earth tremor. I'm like, I thought I was gonna die, come on. It was extreme, come on. He says, you need to realize something here in California that they build buildings with shaking in mind. They build a house with shaking in mind. In other words, the way they architecture and they place the positioning and they use the building techniques, they build a house with shaking in mind. Come on, are you building your life in 2024 with shaking in mind? A house built on the kingdom cannot be shaken in an unshaken world. We need a revelation that. In Matthew 17, it says that there was two houses and each houses represented a different group of people. There were the doers and the hearers. It was the same house. It was the same kind of look and feel. But when the storm came, there was a completely different result. Come on, buddy, somebody, come on. It was the shaking that revealed what they were really made of. Hello. It was the shaking. You know what? It's easy to come into church and say, God is my healer when you are well. It's easy to say, God is my provider when you got money in your bank account. Hello, it's another whole kettle of fish. When you say, God, my heart is about the kingdom. I may have got a diagnosis, but whose report will I believe? I will believe the report of the Lord. My bank account may be on zero, but God, you are Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. Come on. Then the world is shaking. Are you gonna stand on something? Amen. Trust in the Lord with all of your thoughts. Bible doesn't say that. It says, trust in the Lord with all of your, see your head will lie to you. There are gonna be times where the battle of the mind will get you, where you will have your doubts, where you will have your insecurities. But if Christ and his kingdom is part of the doorway that you've allowed to enter your heart, even when your mind doesn't understand it, your heart can stand on stable ground of the kingdom of heaven in Jesus' name, come on. There is a kingdom that God says is unshakable, come on. I believe this morning I'm in the right place, hello. I believe this morning at City Life Church, God is raising a people who would believe that the kingdom of heaven is unshakable. I'm coming to church in good times. I'm coming to church in bad times. When I have my health and when I don't. When I have provision and when I don't. If I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna walk because I trust in who God says that He is in Jesus' name. Colossians tells us this, God has transferred us from the power of darkness and delivered us into what? The kingdom of his son. That word is very important, that word transferred. See, God has moved us from darkness into light, from rebellion to righteousness, from disadvantage to advantage. That's what God's done in your life, come on. 
That word transformed is actually really important because the Greek word transformed, when we, God has transformed us, transferred us, it's actually a picture and the word directly translates as being snatched. I remember walking with my nephew and we were at their house playing soccer and eventually the ball had kind of dribbled out the gate and I went down, he went down, we both went for the ball at the same time. As it rolled into the street, I stopped, looked, saw a car and I grabbed him by his shirt and I pulled him back to the side just as the car got there. I snatched him, come on. See, the reality is his response was not a favorable one. He was like, whoa, and started crying. Why did you do that? What's happening right now? Sometimes God needs to snatch us and it doesn't always feel good. Hello. It doesn't always feel nice when God snatches us, but it's for our own good because God has a plan with your life in Jesus name. Come on. See, I was snatching him. Some of us this morning have been snatched out of bars. We've been snatched out of our addictions. We've been snatched out of low level living. We've been snatched out of our security and been transferred into the kingdom of his son with a hope, a future, a life, a joy. Hello. We've been snatched. Come on. Why is that shaking important? Shaking does not always feel good, I want to tell you. Shaking often feels foreign to us. I don't want to be shaken. We think sometimes it's the devil shaking us, but so often it's actually God who does the shaking in our lives. And it's uncomfortable, but God sometimes shakes our world that that which remains, He can work with. Hello. That which remains, He can progress with. He will shake you so He can shift you. He will shake you so He can shape you in Jesus' name. We need to allow God to sometimes shake our world. See, there's three things that we need to realize. See, shaking doesn't happen to you. Shaking in your world happens for you. Turn to someone around you, tell them it's happened for you. It's happened for you. Shaking doesn't happen to you, it happens for you. My first point today, why we need shaking, number one, is to bring separation. We need it to bring separation. Anyone got one of these at home? <clears throat> this was actually a wedding gift. Was it nearly 22 years and it's still going strong? Come on, I love that, right? There is a shaking sometimes in our lives. Amos 9 verse 9, it says, For I will give the command and I will shake the people of Israel amongst the nations as grain is shaken in a sieve and not a pebble will reach the ground. I love that. See, they understand this morning that there are some things that need to be shaken. What Amos is referring to here is what they would do is they'd take the grain. They'd lay the grain out on the floor and they'd allow, number one, the oxen to walk across the grain. And they would trample, they would get rid of the hard parts, that that which is really the wheat would remain. And then they would take that grain and they would throw it up in the air and they would go through the process of resistance. The wind would blow and the chaff and the loose pieces would blow away, but that which was pure would remain and land on the floor. And then they would collect that which remains on the ground, put it into a sieve and shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, until that which brought the nutrition, that which had value, that which would progress their culture, their people, was that which remained. You see, the problem is for some of us in the shaking, you're still upset about some things that fell out of your life. There are people here today, you are still angry with God at some things that have fallen out of your life. Come on. So you need a revelation today that God hasn't shaken things out of you to anger you, but to actually protect you. Come on. God's shaken some things for these, removed some people from your life. Some people that should not be in your life any longer. Sometimes separation from circumstances. But I had a trajectory. I was being promoted. Yes, but that promotion would end up that you were addicted to alcohol because you couldn't cope with the pressure of the CEO position that you were traveling for. Sometimes we've got to allow God to shake that that which is our best would remain the same. Separation from mindset, separation from thoughts in our head. 
See, we need a revelation here today that sometimes your separation precedes your elevation. Sometimes your separation precedes an elevation that God's about to bring over your life. In Jesus' name, come on. See, the Bible speaks about Abram and Lot. And sometimes we read over this passage. We don't actually see what God's saying here. See, the Bible says in the book of Genesis, after Lot had separated from Abram, the Lord said, look. In other words, God had to remove Lot out of Abram's life in order for him to see his next step. Right there in Scripture. See, the word Lot, what's, what's so profound is that the word Lot actually means veil. There are some veils that you didn't even recognize in your life that until God removes the veil, you will not see your next step. Rejoice in the shaking. Rejoice in the sifting because God's removing some veils that will enable you to see your next step in Jesus' name. Come on. See, some doors are closed, but some doors are opening. You need to realize that. The second thing we realize when it comes to this idea of shaking, number one is separation. Number two is to bring prioritization. Number two, prioritization. In the book of Revelation, the angel says to the church, I've seen your good deeds. I've seen everything you've done, but I have this against you. You've lost your first love. Go back to the things that you did at first. Anyone ever bought salad dressing? Come on. Anyone know salad dressing? You know, this is an Italian vinaigrette. And as I hold this up, what I did was Pastor B actually got me an extra one so I could pour it into a jar. How many of you see that there? Now, that does not look edible. It does not look enticing. But there's been a separation And on that bottle, it says, shake well. Why? Because in the shaking, that which has fallen to the bottom comes back to the top. You have allowed things that were once a priority in your life to settle on the lowest thing. The reading of God's word, which we heard about recently. Come on, prayer. That prayer is not the last step. Prayer is the first step. Let me help you. Prayer is not always sexy. Prayer is not always something that we rah, rah about. Yes, I'm going to pray, but prayer, changes everything come on see God's saying can you go back to some things the reason for the shaking is that in your life there's some things that used to be a priority that actually need to come back to the surface come on and in your life in your business right what does the kingdom look like what does it say about my business deal What is the kingdom in relation to my new relationship? What is the kingdom in the relation to the way I live my life every single day? I don't care what social media says. I want to live for His kingdom because His kingdom remains unshakable. Come on. See, watch this. Anytime you settle, you'll always end up at the bottom. Any time in your life you allow things to settle, you end up in the bottom. God's shaking you, not because He's angry with you. God needs to shake some things so there's a realignment of some priorities in your life. Can I go a step deeper? Intentional mediocrity is actually a sin. Ooh, help us, Jesus. Intentional mediocrity is actually a sin. Why? Because you are robbing the world of your contribution that God has placed on your life. Come on. You're a mover. You're a shaker. You are salt. You are light. Come on. You are a representation of His kingdom. You're an ambassador of the kingdom of God. And in the shaking, God's realigning and reminding you of His priorities. See, my business, I want to tell you, some declarations in this house, my business is not gonna settle. My life is not gonna settle. My marriage is not gonna settle. My kids are not gonna settle because every time we settle, we end up at the bottom of what we should be doing for the Lord. Come on. It's not about just working and grafting so one day I can live this mega life in retirement. I wanna tell you in our family, Even Pastor Bianca, her mom and her dad, they never even reached retirement age. Can you live for the now? Can you live in the moment? Can you allow God to do some shaking that some priorities would come to the top? In Jesus' name, come on. And then the third thing that we see 
shaking for prioritization. I have some medicine. I don't know if you've ever, as a kid, man, when I was a kid, we had some disgusting medicines. I'm like, what were they thinking? Now they make them like peppermint and strawberry and all these great things. Like how many people grew up with bad taste in medicine? Come on. But the one thing worse than eating or drinking medicine was drinking medicine that hadn't been shaken because you would get the top part and not the good stuff at the bottom. You see, shaking can actually in your life be medicinal. Sometimes God allows shaking as a medicinal thing to your faith in God. In Matthew 10, verse 14, Jesus speaking to his disciples, uh, the worship team can come up. He said, shake the dust off when you leave a house or a town. What was Jesus saying? He's saying, when you leave, if they reject you, shake the dust off. In other words, sometimes our shaking is to shake off the rejection of a season that we've just come out of. When Jesus is saying, shake the dust off, you're not bringing a curse on someone. You're not doing something to someone. You're robbing them the influence of the new season that God's allowing you to walk into. See, sometimes the shaking is a declaration that actually, God, I'm leaving some things in the past behind. In the book of Acts, we read about Paul. And Paul comes, he's been shipwrecked. And to make matters worse, listen, when you're shipwrecked, you don't know if you're coming, you're going. You jump out the ship and now you're in water. That's already bad enough. He gets to land. He's busy gathering sticks and a serpent fastens itself upon him. That kind of serpent, the Bible says, the envenomation of that serpent would have surely caused Paul's death. But Paul didn't die. Why? Because he took the envenomation of the snake and he shook it into the fire. The Bible says that God is fire. It says that God's presence is a fire. See, every time you take an envenomation to the presence of God, you remove its power and authority over your life. Sometimes you've got to realize that the shaking is medicinally setting you up for the future that God has for you. See, a serpent bites with its mouth. It gripped with its mouth. Whose mouth has envenomated your life? Whose words have caused you to believe that you are less than who God says you are in this room today? Come on. You've got to shake off some words from people in this house. Come on. The mouth that told you that you couldn't do anything. The mouth that told you you would never amount to anyone. The mouth that told you because you didn't have a father figure in your life, you would never be a good parent. That's a word for someone today. You gotta shake off the envenomation of the mouth of the enemy and begin to go to the light, to the fire, to the presence of God and believe you are who God says you are. You will not die in this season. You will not give up in this season. God has come today to remove the shaking is removing an envenomation on your life come on if God didn't say it it's not who you are find that verse in scripture that tells you that you're a loser tell tell me the verse and the scripture that says you're not gonna make it there is no such scripture whose report will you believe today I will believe the report of the Lord men today Whose report will you believe? We're moving from the back seat to the front seat. We're shaking some things off. And I wanna tell you in my life, God has done some serious shaking and it sucks, it's hard. It's like, what are you doing, God? You're rebuking the devil when it's God who's taking you through the shaking, come on. I understand it's not cool hearing about shaking, but shaking makes you unshakable because that which remains is something that God can use, God can do with your life. Come on. God, I'm ready to be shaken. God, shake things out of my life. Shake things off my life. Today in this room, over every person that's had voices of rejection, the venom of words spoken over you that have left you feeling less than. I wanna pray for you today. I wanna pray over you today. It's time to shape, shake off gossip, shake off slander, come on. Shake off past mistakes. God's 
grace abounds. Where sin abounds, God's grace abounds so much more. Come on. See, outside, when Paul was bitten, <laughs> he was dealt a death bite. There are people in this room that someone has dealt you a death bite. He took it to the fire. When you take it to the Lord, I want to tell you, on the other side of the bite was a young girl who was about to change a city. There was a revolution, a, a revival that was about to break out that Paul got to be part of. Paul and Silas worshiping in prison. Hello. And the jail was flung open and all of the prisoners were saved. The prison wardens were saved. There are people that need to be saved. They're only gonna see some family saved on the other side of you shaking off the dust of some things that people have put on your life. And so right now in this place, can I ask us to stand? Jesus. Father, in this house this morning, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that your word is true. We thank you, Father, for the grace of God. Father, a very hurting person in this place. Every person that's been poisoned by the words of others, that Father, there would be grace upon grace upon their lives. That Father, they are the head and not the tail. They're moving forward. That Lord, greater is you, greater are you, greater is he that is in me than he who's in the world. That God, if you be for us, who could stand against us? That Father, in this place, there are people in this room that right now, I wanna encourage you, it's time to shake off the serpent. Some of you all just need to shake your arm. The past is in the past. Shake the dust off. Remove the rejection. Shake off the envenomation of the serpent. Take it to the fire. God is fire. Take it to the presence of the Lord. Right now, Lord, we bring every word held against us. Father, we want to walk this year through the door of significance, but we cannot walk through the door of significance holding on to the past regret. Lord, give us the grace to realize some people that are no longer in our lives. It was by your divine appointment that there are people here today that they started off as employees and they may have lost employment, but that lost employment has created the entrepreneur in them. Lord, would you give people a revelation that actually the things that you've shaken off have been for our good, Lord. Father, today, we thank you for shaking for separation, shaking for prioritization, and shaking, Lord, for preparation. I thank you, Lord, that you are preparing our people for big things this year. Because in this house, there are big leaders. There are people that carry significant roles and positions and are about to move even to more. But Father, we will not carry the corruption that is so prevalent in today's society and culture. We're not carrying those things, backhand commissions, side deals. No, we're gonna walk with integrity because if our God is for us, who can be against us? And so Father, over every person today, I thank you, Lord, for the shaking. I thank you, Lord, for growing us into the leaders you've called us to be. And right now, Father, while every head is bowed and every eye is closed, Lord, you know hearts here today that are far from you. I ask, Lord, in this place, would you remind people of who you are? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father unless through me. That today is the day of salvation. I wanna give you an opportunity. If you're not a born again believer, if you never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or perhaps you did it a long time, ago but today you're reaffirming your commitment to him i want to pray with you and for you today this is a holy moment so here's what i'm going to ask you to do if that's you on the count of three i'm going to ask you just to slip your hand up so i can include you in my prayer today you're inviting jesus into your heart for the first time or the first time in a very long time so here goes one he loves you too he has a plan for your life. And three, would you lift your hand up right now? Once I've seen your hand, you can put it down so I can include you. Thank you.
you, sir, at the back there. Thank you on the side there, fantastic. Don't miss this moment. Come on, we'll wait a few more moments. If that's you, would you just slip your hand up? Once I've seen your hand, you can put it down. If that's you here today, would you slip your hand up right now? Thank you. We're gonna pray this prayer all together. Lord Jesus, I come before you today and I ask you, Lord, to come into my life. I choose you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' name. Can we give those people a round of applause? Hey, you made it through a tough word. Come on. Ain't nobody get excited about shaking. But when we realize that there's purpose in the shaking, I'm coming through better. I'm coming through stronger. I'm going to walk through a door of significance. Then we realize that actually it's a good thing. Come on. God bless you. Don't forget this week, Tuesday, we're going to have an on fire prayer and praise evening. We would love to see you there. God bless you as you go.